Hey guys, what's up? I'm back with another video. In this video, I will be discussing the history of the Unix OS and how Unix has led to the development of many other OSs, including Linux, BSD, Mac OS, Android, etc., all of which would fall under the class of Unix-like operating systems. Let's start off with where it all started. 1969, Development and the Early Days of Unix Unix is a family of multitasking, multi-user computer operating systems that derive from the original AT&T Unix, whose development started in 1969 at the Bell Labs Research Center by Ken Thompson, Dennis Ritchie, and others. Initially intended for use inside the Bell system, AT&T licensed Unix to outside parties in the late 1970s, leading to a variety of both academic and commercial Unix variants from vendors including University of California, Berkeley, BSD, Microsoft, Xenix, Sun Microsystems, Sun OS and Solaris, HP, HP, HP UX, and IBM, AIX. In the early 1990s, AT&T sold its rights in Unix to Novell, which then sold the Unix trademark to the Open Group, an industry consortium founded in 1996. The Open Group allows the use of the mark for certified operating systems that comply with the single Unix specification. SUS. Unix systems are characterized by a modular design that is sometimes called the Unix philosophy. According to this philosophy, the operating system should provide a set of simple tools, each of which performs a limited, well-defined function. A unified and inode-based file system, the Unix file system, and an interprocess communication mechanism known as pipes serve as the main means of communication, and a shell scripting and command language. The Unix shell, is used to combine the tools to perform complex workflows. Unix distinguishes itself from its predecessors as a first portable operating system, almost the entire operating system is written in the C programming language, which allows Unix to operate on numerous platforms. Further down the track, we head into the 1980s. In the late 1980s, an open operating system standardization effort now known as POSIX provided a common baseline for all operating systems. IEEE based POSIX around the common structure of the major competing variants of the Unix system, publishing the first POSIX standard in 1988. In the early 1990s, a separate but very similar effort was started by an industry consortium, the Common Open Software Environment COS, initiative which eventually became the single Unix specification, SUS, administered by the Open Group. Starting in 1998, the Open Group and IEEE started the Austin Group, to provide a common definition of POSIX and the single Unix specification, which, by 2008, had become the Open Group-based specification. In 1999, in an effort towards compatibility, several Unix system vendors agreed on SVR4's executable and linkable format ELF, as the standard for binary and object code files. The common format allows substantial binary compatibility among different Unix systems operating on the same CPU architecture. The file system hierarchy standard was created to provide a reference directory layout for Unix-like operating systems. It has mainly been used in Linux. Now, let's take a look at the core components of the Unix OS. The Unix system is composed of several components that were originally packaged together. By including the development environment, libraries, documents and the portable, modifiable source code for all of these components, in addition to the kernel of an operating system, Unix was a self-contained software system. This was one of the key reasons it emerged as an important teaching and learning tool and has had such a broad influence. The inclusion of these components did not make the system large, the original v7 Unix distribution, consisting of copies of all of the compiled binaries plus all of the source code and documentation occupied less than 10 megabytes and arrived on a single 9-track magnetic tape, earning its reputation as a portable system. The printed documentation, typeset from the online sources, was contained in two volumes. The names and file system locations of the Unix components have changed substantially across the history of the system. Nonetheless, the v7 implementation is considered by many to have the canonical early structure, kernel, source code in slash s or sys, composed of several subcomponents, conf, configuration and machine-dependent parts, 
including boot code DIM, device drivers for control of hardware, and some pseudo hardware, sys, operating system kernel, handling memory management, process scheduling, system calls, etc. H, header files, defining key structures within the system and important system specific in variables development environment, Early versions of Unix contained a development environment sufficient to recreate the entire system from source code and text editor for creating source code files. CC, C language compiler, first appeared in V3 Unix as machine language assembler for the machine LD, linker for combining object files lib, object code libraries, installed in slash lib or slash us for lib, LRBC, this system library with C runtime support was a primary library, but there have always been additional libraries for things such as mathematical functions, LRBM, or database access. V7 Unix introduced the first version of the modern standard I.O. library STDIO as part of the system library. Later implementations increased the number of libraries significantly make, build manager, introduced in PWB Unix for effectively automating the build process include, header files for software development, defining standard interfaces and system invariants other languages, v7 Unix contained a Fortran 77 compiler, a programmable arbitrary precision calculator, BC, DC, and the AUX scripting language. Later versions and implementations contain many other language compilers and toolsets. Early BSD releases included Pascal tools, and many modern Unix systems also include the GNU compiler collection as well as or instead of a proprietary compiler system. Other tools, including an object code archive manager, R, simple table lister, and M, compiler development tools, for example Nex and Yak, and debugging tools. Commands, Unix makes little distinction between commands, user level programs, for system operation and maintenance, for example cron, commands of general utility, for example grep, and more general purpose applications such as the text formatting and typesetting package. Nonetheless, some major categories are, SH, the shell programmable command line interpreter, the primary user interface on Unix before Windows systems appeared, and even afterward, within a command window. Utilities, the core toolkit of the Unix command set, including CP, LS, grub, find and many others. Subcategories include, system utilities, administrative tools such as MKFS, FSCK, and many others. User utilities, environment management tools such as PASSWD, KILL, and others. Document formatting. Unix systems were used from the outset for document preparation and typesetting systems, and included many related programs such as NROFF, TROF, TBL, EQN, REFER, and PIC. Some modern Unix systems also include packages such as TIX and GoScript. Graphics, the plot subsystem provided facilities for producing simple vector plots in a device-independent format, with device-specific interpreters to display such files. Modern Unix systems also generally include X11 as a standard windowing system and GUI, and many support OpenGL. Communications Early Unix systems contain no intrasystem communication, but it include the inter-user communication programs Mail and Write. V7 introduced the early intersystem communication system UUCP, and systems beginning with BSD release 4.1c included TCP IP utilities. Documentation, Unix was one of the first operating systems to include all of its documentation online in machine-readable form. The documentation included, man, manual pages for each command, library component, system call, header file, etc. doc, longer documents detailing major subsystems, such as the C language and TROF. Unix's impact on the world. The Unix system had a significant impact on other operating systems. It achieved its reputation by its interactivity, by providing the software at a nominal fee for educational use, by running on inexpensive hardware, and by being easy to adapt and move to different machines. Unix was originally written in assembly language, but was then rewritten in C, a high-level programming language. Although this followed the lead of CTSS, Multics and Burroughs MCP, it was Unix that popularized the idea. 
Unix had a drastically simplified file model compared to many contemporary operating systems, treating all kinds of files as simple byte arrays. The file system hierarchy contained machine services and devices, such as printers, terminals, or disk drives, providing a uniform interface, but at the expense of occasionally requiring additional mechanisms such as IOCTL and MOAT flags to access features of the hardware that did not fit the simple stream of bytes model. The Plan 9 operating system pushed this model even further and eliminated the need for additional mechanisms. Unix also popularized the hierarchical file system with arbitrarily nested subdirectories, originally introduced by Multics. Other common operating systems of the era had ways to divide a stored device into multiple directories or sections, but they had a fixed number of levels, often only one level. Several major proprietary operating systems eventually added recursive subdirectory capabilities also patterned after Multics. DexRSX 11M's group, user hierarchy evolved into open VMS directories, CPM's volumes evolved into MSDOS 2.0 plus subdirectories, and HP's MP group account hierarchy and IBM's SSP and OS 400 library systems were folded into broader POSIX file systems making the command interpreter an ordinary user-level program, with additional commands provided as separate programs, was another Multics innovation popularized by Unix. The Unix shell used the same language for interactive commands as for scripting, shell scripts, there was no separate job control language like IBM's JCL. Since the shell and OS commands were just another program, the user could choose, or even write, their own shell. New commands could be added without changing the shell itself. Unix's innovative command line syntax for creating modular chains of producer-consumer processes, pipelines, made a powerful programming paradigm, coroutines, widely available. Many later command line interpreters have been inspired by the Unix shell. A fundamental simplifying assumption of Unix was its focus on newline delimited text for nearly all file formats. There were no binary editors in the original version of Unix, the entire system was configured using textual shell command scripts. The common denominator in the I.O. system was the byte, unlike record-based file systems. The focus on text for representing nearly everything made Unix pipes especially useful and encouraged the development of simple, general tools that could be easily combined to perform more complicated ad hoc tasks. The focus on text in bytes made the system far more scalable and portable than other systems. Over time, text-based applications have also proven popular in application areas, such as printing languages, PostScript, ODF, and at the application layer of the Internet protocols, for example, FTP, SMTP, HTTP, SOAP, and SAP. Unix popularized a syntax for regular expressions that found widespread use. The Unix programming interface became the basis for a widely implemented operating system interface standard, POSIX, C above. The C programming language soon spread beyond Unix, and is now ubiquitous in systems and applications programming. Early Unix developers were important in bringing the concepts of modularity and reusability into software engineering practice, spawning a software tools movement. Over time, the leading developers of Unix, and programs that ran on it, established a set of cultural norms for developing software, norms which became as important and influential as the technology of Unix itself. This has been termed the Unix philosophy. The TCP IP networking protocols were quickly implemented on the Unix versions widely used on relatively inexpensive computers, which contributed to the Internet explosion of worldwide real-time connectivity, and which formed the basis for implementations on many other platforms. The Unix policy of extensive online documentation and, for many years, ready access to all system source code raised programmer expectations, and contributed to the launch of the free software movement in 1983. Unix and Unix-like operating systems In 1983, Richard Stallman announced the GNU, short for GNU's Not Unix Project, an ambitious effort to create a free software Unix-like system free in the sense that everyone who received a copy would be free to use, study, modify, and redistribute it. The GNU Project's own kernel development project, GNU Heard, 
had not yet produced a working kernel, but in 1991 Linus Torvalds released the Linux kernel as free software under the GNU General Public License. In addition to their use in the GNU operating system, many GNU packages, such as the GNU compiler collection, and the rest of the GNU tool chain, the GNU C library and the GNU core utilities, have gone on to play central roles in other free Unix systems as well. Linux distributions, consisting of the Linux kernel and large collections of compatible software have become popular both with individual users and in business. Popular distributions include Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Fedora, SUSC Linux Enterprise, OpenSUSE, Debian, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Mandriva Linux, Slackware Linux, Arch Linux and Gentoo. A free derivative of BSD Unix, 386 Bahamian dollars, was released in 1992 and led to the NetBSD and FreeBSD projects. With the 1994 settlement of a lawsuit brought against the University of California and Berkeley Software Design Incorporated USLV. BSDI, by Unix System Laboratories, it was clarified that Berkeley had the right to distribute BSD Unix for free if it so desired. Since then, BSD Unix has been developed in several different product branches, including OpenBSD and Dragonfly BSD. Linux and BSD are increasingly filling the market needs traditionally served by proprietary Unix operating systems, as well as expanding into new markets such as the consumer desktop and mobile and embedded devices. Because of the modular design of the Unix model, sharing components is relatively common. Consequently, most or all Unix and Unix-like systems include at least some BSD code, and some systems also include GNU utilities in their distributions. In a 1999 interview, Dennis Ritchie voiced his opinion that Linux and BSD operating systems are a continuation of the basis of the Unix design, and are derivatives of the Unix. I think the Linux phenomenon is quite delightful, because it draws so strongly on the basis that Unix provided. Linux seems to be the among the healthiest of the direct Unix derivatives, though there are also the various BSD systems as well as the more official offerings from the workstation and mainframe manufacturers. In the same interview, he states that he views both Unix and Linux as the continuation of ideas that were started by Ken and me and many others, many years ago. OpenSolaris was the free software counterpart to Solaris developed by Sun Microsystems, which included a CDDO licensed kernel and a primarily GNU userland. However, Oracle discontinued the project upon their acquisition of Sun, which prompted a group of former Sun employees and members of the OpenSolaris community to fork OpenSolaris into the Illumos kernel. As of 2014, Illumos remains the only active open-source system v derivative. Alrighty, that's it for this video folks. Please remember to hit that subscribe button, and do be sure to give my videos a thumbs up, it would be much appreciated and do enable notifications, so that you won't miss out on any future videos. Okay, bye for now.